if you've watched one if you've watched a bunch of my videos you'll know that I'm a big battery nerd and I love these power stations I love seeing how much power they can get out of these tiny little things um, with more and more capacity so today we're gonna be taking a look at this Picron E600 LFP and check out its specs and I'll tell you exactly why I bought it and how well it worked for me Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at this Picron E600 LFP. I'm guessing the LFP stands for Life PO4, Life PO4. It is a lithium iron phosphate model of, uh, they call them solar generators, or they call them uh, portable power banks, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, it's got a bunch of batteries in it. It's got a bunch of features to it, so we're going to take a look at those features. Uh, but basically... The reason I've got this, and I've got other models like this, I've got some of the, the bigger names that you've heard of, like Jackery and Blue Eddy, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, and I haven't heard of this brand Picron before, but it caught my eye because it was on a really good deal on Amazon and uh, had some really good specs. It's kind of no frills, um, doesn't have some of the features that some of the bigger ones do, but we'll talk about that. But it's, it looked like it was perfect for what I needed. But basically what I needed was to power up some stuff at a booth at a Comic-Con. So this past weekend we did a, uh, a Comic-Con locally here. And you can hear all about that on our Family Geekery podcast. And also you can see exactly what I powered up on it on this YouTube channel. Um, I'll put a link up here to uh, the arcade machine that I built for our booth. And I needed a way to power it. Now, if, uh, if you can imagine those conference centers that have these Comic-Cons... They rent you the booth, and they rent you the power if you want. And the, the rental for the power was actually more than the booth was. It was some ridiculous price, like 95 bucks for the, uh, you know, for the couple hours that we're going to be there. And I decided to go ahead and grab one of these. Like I said, I've got other ones that are a little bit smaller in capacity. And they probably would have worked, but I wanted to just have, you know, more than enough just in case. And just in case, you know, some booth nearby needed some power real quick. Uh, I could help them out as well, and uh, this thing kept that arcade machine running the whole time with uh, zero issues. It it had more power than it needed. It had more capacity than it needed. So let's talk about some of the specs, and I'll tell you exactly how it worked. So I like that they called this model the E600 because it makes it easy for me to remember what the capacity is, and it's 614, so basically 600 uh, watt hours. And if you want to learn more about what watt hours means and what amps and current and voltage and all that stuff. I've got a video that I can also link right up here that uh, tells you all about that. But basically, 600 watt hours, the bigger that number is, um, the longer it will run your stuff. Um, in addition to that, you need to know how many watts it's capable of. And in this case, we've got different things. We've got an AC output here of 1200 watts, which means if you plug anything in here, you need to make sure that it totals less than 1200 watts. And basically, but the more you plug in here, the faster it's going to start using that 600 watt hours. Um, if you had something that was 1200 watts plugged into here, then this thing would only run a half an hour because it's only got 600 watt hours. Um, but in addition to this, we've got the DC output here, which is just your basic standard 12 volts, 10 amps, so 120 watts. So you get a SIG plug uh, hole in there. Plus some barrel jacks, which is nice, because there's some devices that you can run if you've got the right cable right off of this, right off of DC, that would save you plugging an AC adapter into here and then changing it to DC and losing some in the conversion. So that's nice to have, and you can buy, basically for any type of device that you need, you can buy a uh, the right size barrel jack adapter for it and use that. In addition to this DC output, we also have the DC output that's a little bit easier to understand. We got these two USB A here, which are 18 watts each. We got a USB C, which is 18 watts. And we've got a full power delivery, 100 watt, out here. And that's awesome because I just used a USB C adapter for uh, one of the things I was plugging, plugging in, which was a laptop, and uh, ran the laptop right off of this. And that saved me from running you know, a laptop charger into here and using AC to DC to get into the, the laptop. I just went straight USB-C right into the laptop and it, it was only used like 15 watts anyway, so it was more than enough. 
So that's all our outputs. And like I said, very easy. We've got our AC output here. We've got our DC output here. And then we've got our inputs over here. So we've got a DC input, which says 12 volts, 18 volts to 100 watts max. And then we've got this 32 to 95 volts, 400 watts max input also. So depending on what you're plugging into here, you can either plug in some solar panels into this guy here or the included charger um, into this guy here. Now the charger itself, it's I like when you have the charger built into this and you just plug like a computer cable into there, one of the three prong cables in there and it's nice and easy because you don't have to worry about remembering what kind of cable to bring. But that just adds, obviously it adds weight to the inside of this to have a big old power supply in there. Um, and it's going to add some size to it also. And in the case that I had, I didn't need to bring a charger with me because I knew I didn't have power in there anyways. I needed to bring this thing that was going to be self-sufficient. So it actually saved the weight, saved the size. And this thing's only 20 pounds fully loaded. So it was easy to get in and out of there. It doesn't take up much room at all. You can see it's not much bigger than my hand. So it's it was nice and portable. But the uh, like I said, there is the downside of having an external power adapter. And that is, you got to remember where this thing is, right? <laughs> Label it so you don't forget what it is. You got to have it with you if you need to charge things. But basically, this is a big 42 volt, uh, 7 amp output. So basically, about 300 watts. And it's got this kind of proprietary adapter on it here, which is going to plug into here. So plug it into the wall, plug it in. It's going to charge it up about, like I said, ballpark 300 watts. So it'll take a couple hours to fully charge this thing but it's 300 watts is pretty fast um, you can also do solar like I said up to 100 watts if you have a, a 100 watt solar panel so that's pretty cool if you're gonna go camping that's a good feature but to uh, to make it a little bit nicer to have this external adapter it does come with a nice little case here kind of like a zippered hard case and inside there was couple other cables so you have the charger itself you've got a sig plug charger so you can actually plug this into your car and then plug this into here so you can charge it up on the road as you're driving and then we've got some solar panel adapters here to plug in and a couple other adapters as well so all that came in this nice little zipper case so you're not going to lose that stuff um, but like I said, carry this around when you need to. If you're going to go on an extended trip that you're going to need to charge it every now and then, then you got something to carry all that stuff in. But if you just need to carry this something someplace, maybe you're going down to the beach or you're going on a, a camping trip where you're not going to be able to recharge it or maybe just recharge it on solar only, then save yourself the weight of bringing this thing around and just carry the unit itself. And one last feature that I didn't want to overlook, um, it, it is nice, but it's not essential. And you can't see it because I've got this thing propped up at an angle because there's some hideous glare coming off of here. But right on top of here is a wireless charger also. So you can just drop your phone right on top of there and charge that just in case you forget to bring your charging cable. So that's a nice little touch, a little added bonus tab on there. So let's talk about how this thing performed. So like I said, I wanted to make sure I could run my booth for the full time, which was going to be, you know, usually we set up the booth. We started setting up around 7 o'clock in the morning and it ran all the way until 4.30 in the afternoon. So I wanted to make sure we had plenty of power for, you know, eight, let's say eight hours worth of booth time. And uh, I had one thing plugged in here, which was the monitor for the arcade machine. And then I had the uh, computer plugged in here, which was running the software for the arcade machine. And between these two, it was only using maybe 60 to 80 watts max at any given time. So I actually did a dry run that uh, I think like a day before where I plugged everything in, turned it all on, had this thing fully charged and let it go through the night. And I think the next morning um, it was still had plenty of uh, plenty of power left in it. Now, as far as the, the booth uh, yesterday at the at the Comic Con that we did, I ran that thing the full time. And if we look on here now, I haven't charged it since there's still 51%. So what's also nice is when I had everything plugged in, it tells you how many DC watts you're using, how many AC watts once you turn the AC on, 
how many AC watts it has going. So you can see how many watts everything is using. And it does the math for you and it tells you how many hours it had left. So like in the morning when I turned it on and got everything running and everything was running at full power, it said I had like 14 hours. So I knew I was going to be fine for that 8 hour day. In fact, um, as, the, as the laptop charges completely up and doesn't need any more power, then obviously the DC power was going down and it was extending that life. So it worked out perfectly for me, and uh, I was extremely happy with that, with how it worked. Now, without a lot of draw on it, you heard the fan kick on as soon as I turned on this inverter here for the AC. Without a whole lot of power going on it, I don't think the fan kicked on at all, so it wasn't putting out a super amount of power. If this thing, if you're putting out 1200 watts, that fan's going to kick on because it's got to keep the internals um, nice and cool. But I didn't have any problem at all. This thing was just sitting underneath the table at the booth. I didn't hear anything from it, and it just worked like a champ. Now, once you plug this guy in, you know, when I did plug this in to charge it the night before, if it's got to charge this thing up a bunch, then this thing has to be putting out its full 200, 300 watts. And it's got a fan on it, and this will... This will get your attention. It's not, like, annoyingly loud, but you'll know something's running. In fact, my wife thought uh, I was running, you know, the, the oven or something like that, or the convection oven, um, but it really, I was just charging this in the in the kitchen. So that will make some noise um, as you're charging, but it wasn't horrible. Like I said, within a couple of hours, I had this thing topped all the way up, and uh, and then, of course, it shuts off. The fan doesn't run the full time. So I talked briefly about the fact that it's... Uh, LifePo4 or lithium iron phosphate batteries in here and that's important in fact if you if you read any reviews that's going to be a big selling point for something like this and that's because we have a bunch of devices that are lithium ion and lithium ion phosphate and all kinds of different lithium products um, but the the thing that makes these special is after and this one's rated for 3000 full recharges or 3500 full recharges the batteries will still maintain 80% of their original power. So you don't have to worry about the batteries eventually, you know, getting worn out because 3,000 cycles of this thing, if you recharge this thing once a day or once a, a week, it would be 10, 20, 30, 40 years before, and it doesn't make this thing broken at that point. It just means that this thing will be 80% of its rated power before. So instead of 600, you know, it would be 480 or whatever. So that's that was worth, uh, I know one of my old Jackery ones is not the uh, lithium iron phosphate, it's just a regular lithium ion. Um, that was worth doing an upgrade for me. That was one thing that I was looking for, because this is an investment. You're putting a couple hundred bucks into something like this, and you want to make sure that, you know, two years down the road, if you don't use it a whole lot, the, the batteries are just going to be, you know, useless for you. A battery backup that has bad batteries is not worth anything. So that was one feature that I was looking for. Now, some of the features that are missing, some of these units have like a Bluetooth uh, thing built in that you can talk to this with your, with your phone. And while I didn't need that because I could just look right on here and see everything that was happening, see um, how many watts it was using, how much time was left, how much percentage was left, um, that was nice and easy for me. I do understand that if you have this running like solar, and you've got this plugged into some solar powers outside, and maybe this is inside in your office or something, then it would be nice to be able to see what kind of charge you're getting input-wise with your solar panels as you're outside, you know, adjusting the angles on them and, and getting them pointed towards the sun and everything without having to run back inside, look at the screen, see how many watts you're getting charge-wise, and then running back out and adjusting them again. So... If you had, if you were going to use this in that kind of use case, then yes, it would be better if you had a, an app that you could run on your phone. But for what I needed, I didn't need any kind of fancy app or anything to tell me everything that's going on. This tiny little screen here told me everything I needed to know. So that's really it. I just wanted to tell you about this. This is a, a device that I did by myself. I was not sent this as a demo. I was not sent this for review. I, I shopped for it myself. I picked it out myself. Again, I wasn't familiar with the name um, up front, but it had some good reviews, and I was uh, confident that it was going to do what I needed, and this will definitely stay in my, uh, my ever-growing collection of batteries. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. 
Um, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below if you've got something like this or if you've got one of these uh, in particular or if you've got a different device that's bigger or smaller and tell me how you like it. Um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to drop those down in the comments also and I'll be happy to tell you um, anything that I can out of after my experience of using this. But thank you as always for watching and until next time, peace out and geek out.